Hi, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Tuzame. Like Hi, every Cili. week, I Tzili, and everybody knows by now that we do Tuzame together because we would like to be inspired. We would like to open our mind to new stuff. We are not television. We are not the news. We are actually just would like to enrich ourselves. So we invite people every week uh, that we think they can inspire us. And today we have... And a sheriff, right? Which who, an Israel composer, and, Israeli composer, and and well, she's also I think sings, no? She used to sing. She used to Do sing. You still sing? Ella. It doesn't matter. You, you are singer. Once a singer, tomorrow you are a singer. Doesn't okay. matter about today. So don't worry mm -hmm. about it. But I must tell you something, which uh, I just silly remembers. I met your son, at least one of them, and when I was told that he is your son, and your fantastic late husband, Noam Sharif, who is a, was a wonderful, wonderful musician. I was overwhelmed because I graduated Academy of Music in Tel Aviv. Don't ask me what year, no way. <laughs> I was a student of uh, one of the best piano teachers in Israel, Emma Gorokhov. I don't know if you know uh -huh. her. And so I met your husband in the Academy of Music. And I cannot tell you, you know, some people you don't see a lot, but they really become part of your personal history and really is one of them. So I was so excited. I was like, oh, wow, you know, like it's, it's really going back to the lane of memories. So I just wanted to tell you. But that, you have uh, more because you're a student of her sister. So then when yeah. I finished Academy of Music, I went to, oh, the last year I decided to study theater and your sister was my teacher. Wow. I think it was maybe her first year or second. And you know, yes. again, again, I have, I don't have it here, it, I have it in Israel. I have two notebooks that I kept from two teachers in my life. One of them is Michal Zmora in the Academy of New Music, and the other one, your sister, Sosha Vigail. She, Abigail. she was amazing. She entered the room, she filled it up. And her knowledge, you know, her personality was like, like, you know, like a, whoa, like a, like a, how you say, argash, like a, argash, <laughs> whatever, you know, so. Volcano. Yes. Argash, volcano. Volcano, but volcano in a good way, uh, you know. So I just want to tell you that I connect to you. I talk too much. Let's start. They want to no, hear. that's okay. You get but excited. They want to, it's yeah, nice. but they want to hear her, not me, for but example. But you know, I have to say about Shosh, one thing. Wait, can you just give yourself a little bit more headspace? Um, your head will not. The film director is here. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, I have a problem. If I. No, no, no. Don't, 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 Yes, on the wall yes, behind her. And then we have in the background something that we're going to talk later, which is okay. a good friend of yours. And, you know, Nava Semel, we'll yeah. talk about it later. Yeah. What you know, you that I just wanted to add about Josh, not only that she knew so much, she was so articulate. Yes. The way she delivered what right. she had to say. And she was so contemporary in her thoughts. She was a uh, progress progressivic and contemporary. She had a great mind. How do you know, by the way? Great. Took a class with her? I never took a class uh -huh. with her, but I heard her oh, a that's lot. Okay. That's good. And uh, I like to read what she said yes. about theater. I like to hear what she said about theater. Yes. Um, <laughs> she was, she had a very unique voice. She was like a very vine, like a vine, voice. you know, like we say very like a unique yeah, voice. wonderful. Very fresh, very smart, very different. Uh, I think she had a very unusual voice in Israel uh, yes. about theater, and yeah. it was um, it was uh, very uh, very special. And she was special. devastating when she passed away, and when I was very your sorry. husband passed away. So here you are, you know. So, but, but you know, but you carry them. It's, I can feel you carry them in you. So there is a sense of optimism coming out. Which is which is wonderful, at least for now. Anyway, how do you, know? you still didn't hear me. So hey. how do you know if I'm optimistic? I, I believe in facial expression. I know I'm a professor of cinema here at NYU. And okay. I actually preach them about the power of the closet. 
Tippi, maybe I'm a good actor. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So let's wait for my next one. But facial expression and body language carries a lot of who you are. It's really like external to internal. It's wonderful. So how are you, Ella? Okay, so COVID. may I just uh, correct the names because I really do care about names. So first of all, Shosh Abigal. Yes. And she was, uh, as you said, a very unique person. And uh, I can, of course, uh, talk about her a lot. I know. And second, my own name is Ella Milch Sharif. Oh, it's Milch. Okay. Sharif. And Milch this is, is her father's name, and she kept it. Can you just connect yourself? This is uh, really significant for me. I added my maiden name to my name uh, as, as my professional name uh, to carry on my father's name because he lost his uh, son in the Holocaust. Oh. And when I understood how, uh, what a great, loss of course it was a great loss but for him the continuity was uh, very important and uh, as his life story was uh, really devastating and special i uh, composed works based on his life story our life story and i added this the name milch to my name this so please you write it down or say just okay. was he alive when you added the name no oh. no after it doesn't matter but he knows no just a just a just to know if he knew or not but the, but you know, but but let us just mention you know I, I meant to come to it later but you know my friend Abi Nesher did a film about the story of your father and your family and you and your sister and you composed the music for the film right Right, right. I actually composed a part of the music, uh, which the, the main personality, main character in the film, the young composer, student composer then, based on my uh, character, uh, everything she played or composed in the film, I actually composed in reality. That's, that's really amazing. So I meant to, to go there later, but if we are here already, um, so how is it actually to follow a film done on your life? Because we many times, and it's so common, right, um, that we adapt from books to films, from a play to film, but now we take a real story. For, and yeah. the two main characters are alive. The, oh, Sosh was alive when the film came out? No. She didn't see the film. So it was only no. you looking and, and seeing them in the, almost in the mirror, your life and your parents and your sister? Well, if I may, I, I will tell you a little bit more about it. My father uh, wrote a diary uh, during the Holocaust, uh, which he uh, assumed was lost. And then he wrote uh, his memories and uh, made me and Shosh make, <coughs> excuse me, a book out of it. So this book, just a minute. Also, oh, it was adaptation from a book. Yes. Oh, wow. This book. Uh, even be born. Can even be void. Uh, was, was published by Yad Vashem in 1999 or 2000. My father was no more alive then. He passed away in, 18, in 1989. Oh, okay. So um, I, uh, about uh, a couple of years afterwards, I got a commission to compose a work for an orchestra. And I decided to compose a work uh, by the name of Can Heaven Be Void, like the book, 
uh, which uh, is based actually on parts of this diary. And what is the uh, meaning of the name? Sorry? What is, the, what is the meaning of the name? Belief. Can, can, be heaven, can heaven be void? Are heaven empty? Is heaven empty, void, nothing right. in heaven? He lost his belief during the Holocaust. Okay, it's and the relationship that he had with God. Well, I'm not telling you the whole story, but part of the story was uh, in Avi Nesher's film. So anyhow, I composed the work for a, a narrator, singer, and orchestra based on uh, uh, this diary. And Shosh helped me to form a kind of a libretto for this work out of uh, this diary. And um, uh, I, just a minute, okay. I, I just heard noises, sorry. So um, uh, this work was first uh, uh, performed in Israel and uh, the reaction was so powerful that everybody told me you have to translate it and take it to the world. Also, it was in Hebrew? Yeah, it was at was first it? in Hebrew. And then I, I translated it to many languages and it was performed really in many, many places uh, in Europe and in the United States in English. And uh, then because of this work, I got a commission to compose an opera oh. about this subject. And uh, I got a commission from a German opera house in Braunschweig, which is uh, a bit North Germany. Uh, and I composed a work, uh, an opera uh, which is called uh, Baruch Silence. My father's name was Baruch, huh? and uh, uh, the silence of Baruch, Shtikato Shel Baruch. Yes, yes. And uh, this opera uh, really had a, a huge impact and received uh, uh, really great uh, critics and was. Uh, performed in Vienna and other cities in... Who wrote the libretto? Who wrote the words? El Ronen, uh, who is an Israeli playwright and... Uh, um, She's the daughter of Ilan Ronen. Uh, yeah. She's now living in Germany, right? She lives in Berlin and she's extremely t uh, talented. Yes. Okay, so yeah. she wrote the story based on your, your stories? wrote the libretto based on my father's diary and on many, many conversations she had with me. So we worked on it together. She wrote an amazing libretto. Now, Avi Nesher, and then after these two works, uh, my son Tal, Tal Lazar, who is a cinematographer, producer, director, film director, and a teacher. Uh, he said, listen, Ima, it's a, a material for a film. And I said, Are you, do you think so? He said, absolutely, I'm sure. And he took this uh, book to an independent director in Los Angeles, ah. a non-Jewish one who read the book and said, I will do this film. It will be the most important film I will ever do. And, uh, but we need a script. Uh, so we gave uh, the mission to a certain lady uh, who, uh, was also non-Jewish with the thought that maybe she will bring to the story a different uh, point of view yes. because we are so much involved. We, I mean, not me personally, but we uh, Jewish people and the Holocaust and all this. But unfortunately, it was not what I was looking for. And uh, then David, 
who was uh, the, the power or the engine behind uh, the beginning of the whole idea, told David, me this- Ella's uh, cousin, David Milch. Is David Milch, the same name, and the, I'm sure it is also very important for him to hear my name is Ella Milch Sharif. <laughs> right, right. So um, David said, listen, Ella, you have to find somebody in Israel who will want to work with you. And I started to look and I really wanted to meet Avi Nesha. He's a fantastic film director. Yeah, and I knew his uh, producer then, uh, Dudi Zilber. Oh, well. and, and I asked Dudi, can you arrange for me a meeting with Avi? And uh, he said, I can, but he won't do a film. Uh, about this subject, you can forget about it. And I said, please try to That's arrange. Enough. And then uh, I, I met Avi and uh, uh, I started to tell him the story. And uh, Avi said, listen, it's a, a very powerful story, which I didn't tell you, but if you saw the film, you know. I think everybody should it. see the film. Yeah, so um, uh, he said, it's a powerful story, but I'm not going to do a film about it. I'm not going to touch any more anything which has to do with the Holocaust. You see, wow, I mean, you know, it's like, it, it, I'm just for a minute to tell you, that's what we can pick up later. They, the people don't want in Israel to see films about the Holocaust. I'm amazed. But anyway, so he said he will not touch it and then, yeah. So uh, Avi tells that uh, at that moment I started, uh, tears started to, and I said, you don't understand. It's not a film about Holocaust. Right. It's a film about us, about the second generation, about us living in a house which we full of secrets and monsters yes. that we don't understand we don't want to hear about it but we are curious to understand why our house was the way it was right i, I told him about josh my sister and myself and i started to see his eyes started <laughs> to yeah it can be really a, a enthusiastic yeah. when he's touched and he said, listen, I adore your music. He knew Tzchok Shalach Barosh and the Red Laughed, and my opera, my first opera. And he heard other works of mine. And he said, listen, I adore you as a composer, but I cannot promise you anything. He grabbed the book and the DVD <laughs> of my opera and said, give me a couple of weeks. And uh, if I found find a way to tell this story uh, with uh, it's like a coffee without coffee in a holocaust story without holocaust <laughs> i will uh, i will call you and then after two weeks he called me and said listen i think i have an idea are you ready to answer a million questions i said two millions and uh, we started to meet. And but then- you see, But look at his approach. He asked you his need when, before he tells the story to know what questions he, is, he wants to pursue. You know what I mean? It's very interesting that he, he, he came to you with a lot of questions because this is the best engine to, to, to touch a story. The research Avi Nesha did not yes. only with me personally, but with everybody who knew Shosh or me or my family, my parents, he saw videos, he, everything. He made a, a, a research. Very compelling film. Yeah, and then he wrote a very detailed treatment, which he gave me to read. Uh, and I, I had the right to uh, object or to approve the right. treatment. And uh, I was amazed 
you know, first of all, I'm a, an artist, I'm a creator. <coughs> I know what creation is. I know how important it is to the freedom. Yes, to mm -hmm. not easy. Yeah, but I know how it is. So I, I really, I was opened to give him this freedom. And what he did in the film, for instance, shows my sister uh, passed away long before, the you know, my first meeting with Avi. And he thought at first that in the film she will be, is, is, she will have cancer and die. And in the middle of uh, writing the treatment, he calls me and said, you know, Ella, I'm so much in love with her personality. I cannot kill her. So I said, don't, don't kill her. Yeah. It, it really, and, was, it really, it, it really um, you know, people don't, whoever didn't read the book or the film, your story is so many layers. Is a situation. It's your father's story. It's like the ghosts in the in the house where you grew up. It's a relationship of your father and even your mother. You didn't have to do anything in the film just to look at her, and you understood who is this woman. The relationship between the sisters, and then the big secret, you know, that that your house that is uh, revealed in the film. All these layers were so wonderful interweaving in the film. But I'm curious, Ella, you had the opportunity to watch from the outside your life on the screen. You had an opportunity to watch it on stage. You had an opportunity to look at the concert. And as an audience, you basically uh, put yourself even on stage, but you said to the audience, but your heart was on stage. How does it feel to watch your life on so many, so many levels and different, different angles unfold in front of other people? And as an audience, once while you know your part in this story. Yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, I, I, I can say that uh, every time I heard my pieces, my opera and the film, even the film, every time I watched it, I trembled. I didn't tremble because I was uh, afraid of the exposure that people will watch me as this or that. I trembled because the truth was there, the the um, uh, the core yes. of of the truth was there, and uh, I oh, each time I felt I had a huge privilege to be able to bring this story in different ways. To the world. Yeah, but you know, think about it. When you watched, like what Silly said, you know, all this medium, film, opera, when you watched, we say that there are no flashbacks, there are only flesh present. Whenever we have or we see a flashback of our life, it's now. So when you watch the film and you saw the girl with the father, this is what you saw, you as a girl with your father then at the present. So when we write, we have to remember that. So when you come out of your flashback, your reaction is to, to now, not something that happened to you when you were a kid. So I understand completely your, your uh, uh, trembling. It's clear to me, you know, so I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I have branches. I'm sorry, I even made it worse. I cannot uh, close it. <laughs> Just shut up. Oh, 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 yeah, I know, I know. Oh, come on. But anyway, see, I just told you, I'm also in the present now. I cannot take it. Okay, <laughs> it will go away in a minute. That's, that's why the trembling, I think, you know? It's like you are really living it at the moment, totally. You're, you're absolutely right. Each time I, I'm there, it's the present. You are so right. 
and it uh, makes you on different level because every time you're personally someplace else with yourself so you can see it from so many uh, steps of your life which is very different every time but you know in a way your family uh, found a very dramatic way to keep things going because every every holocaust survivor and every holocaust family has its way to deal with this either to deal with this or to hide it or to be quiet about it and it just happened that your family uh, between shows that was part of the theater you're in music david is in films um you found a very and there's always a lot of drama i, I yeah, find it hard to concentrate uh, hearing the, the sound. Sound. No, i cannot concentrate i really apologize to you and to the millions of people who are watching us <laughs> i'm really sorry <laughs> Okay, don't you know how to turn it yeah, off? I couldn't, but this COVID, people I can write to them, please don't call me, I'm going to Zoom, and they call me. And you know, my grandchildren. I mean, <laughs> not everybody. It's okay. Really yeah. Anyway, sorry. I couldn't concentrate. Could you repeat your, your question? Well, we're talking, oh, look at who is coming to visit behind you. And, uh, <laughs> Your dog. Hi. your dog, your dog is there. Yeah. I just, you know, I just thought about the drama that your uh, your story brings, and we had the drama with the phone and with the with the other stuff and with the grandkids. It's all very drama dramatic. But in your family, you channeled it into a very dramatic uh, way of exploring things because of all of you that dealing with a very dramatic uh, way of life. So this is, I think we gain from that in a way that you bring the story on so many levels that can cross many lines to many people, each one in his favorite uh, uh, way of either music or films or theater. And it's, it's very interesting. It's beautiful. It's really beautiful. It yeah. So, so you you only write in Hebrew? What do you mean? You, I, I mean, I compose music. Yes, but basically, when you get the first libretto, it's in Hebrew. Uh, no, oh, I, no, I compose to English, to the French, to German, ah. and to okay, too many languages. Ella is working all over. And I, uh, we just before we have to, I think, close the door. Just a second, we have to close no, the door. No, you can keep going. We're home, so many things happen at home all the time. But when you, the the new show that you had, and you were supposed to tour Europe, and you had the opening in Leipzig, right? And two seconds before the Corona, and that, right. and it's going to come back but still you create a lot in Europe and all over the world um, sometimes more than I think in Israel well uh, it depends uh, there are periods uh, which uh, more in Israel but uh, I would say that uh, in the last 10 years uh, it's more and more often in Europe uh, which is great uh, for me. Because Israel is less accepted. There are, le there are not so many classical composers in Israel, women. Not in the world, uh, by the way. Not in the history, uh, by the way. Not in? Not in not in Israel, not in the world in the present, but not in the history. There are not many female composers. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, TP, in the history, there were not many uh, women writers, women writers, women scientists, yes. and so on and so on. Yes. But, but in the present day, there are, I, I would say, quite many women composers mm -hmm. in, in the so-called uh, classical music uh, in Israel and all over the world. There are quite many. Maybe you would say they're not as known yes. as the male composers 
or most of them are not well known as the male composers. In, I wouldn't. But inside the musical, uh, the classical musical world, and inside the world of followers of music, they know these ladies, and they know that they're everywhere, and they hear them a lot. Uh, I think that mainly for the general population, we know the old times uh, names, the classical names. I don't think that everybody knows. Not women. No, but the old days, you didn't have women anywhere. You, you were, but nobody paid attention to them. You know, like totally Schumann, Cla you know, like, Clara Schumann, what's her name? Clara Schumann. And painters, how many female painters we know, like, like 50 years ago, what? Right, so that, I'm Keith? not talking about okay, 50 then. years ago, I'm talking about really old classic. The, in modern times, you have many women, just not everybody knows everybody. Yeah. You have you have certain people that know more than others. I but, think there were musicians and here. painters back then, in two, 100 years ago, but nobody even thought they could do anything. They were dismissed. Right. But today they have room and yes. they have stages and they have a way of yes. expressing themselves. There are many women everywhere now. Can you please yes. uh, take us a little bit into the process? So when you write an opera or a um, piece for an orchestra or for chamber music, right? So mm -hmm. you start with a melody and then, you know, what is it really the process until you get it into a particular? Um, uh, it, it depends. Actually, it's different from one work to the other. Uh, it, it could start with the, an idea of a melody which develops uh, in certain ways. Uh, it could start uh, with a harmony, with rhythm, uh, uh, pieces with the texts, which I use very often. I compose a lot uh, to text, uh -huh. not only uh -huh. opera. For, inter for instance, the last work that was uh, played in Leipzig that uh, Tilly talked about uh, was a new text written by Joshua Sobol. Oh. I wrote he wrote it. He's an you. Israeli playwright. He's a yeah. fantastic playwright. Very good His daughter playwright. had a lead in my film. His daughter, uh -huh. yeah, daughter in law. His daughter in law, Adigilat. And the lead in my last film. Uh, okay. So, so Yoshua, I asked Yoshua to write a, a certain text which has to do with a, a Beethoven because it was a commissioned for 250 years to Beethoven's birthday. Uh, so last year, 2020, uh, was actually called Beethoven's year in the classical music. Uh, unfortunately, it started January, February, and then it's over. So now 21, uh, tries to fill the gap. Anyhow, um, so Joshua wrote a text um, which in a way is based on a dream that Beethoven dreamt and wrote about, a, a, a very special dream which tells that Beethoven who hated the travels and even didn't ever go to England Although he was invited because he was afraid to travel, he dreamt that he's traveling to Syria, to Arabia, to oh, India, oh. and this journey ends in Jerusalem. And he even hears a kind of a canon, canon, you know what it right. is. Um, and he writes to his friend, the canon he heard, in the dream. So I, I gave Joshua this text and Joshua wrote a huge poem, which is called The Eternal Stranger, because Beethoven, not only because he was deaf, but because he was really strange and people thought he's half crazy and he's uh, not uh, social and he's not clean. He went with his hair, yes. not and exactly. So, um, 
Yoshua wrote a kind of a text which is also combining Beethoven, uh, but also all kind of refugees which find himself, uh, finding uh, themselves in a strange country, which is so much uh, in Europe in the last uh, uh, years. So uh, I took parts of this huge poem and I made a, a work based on it. So in this work, you know, how did it, 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 it I start with sounds which create a kind of an atmosphere of a strange place. So it's not a melody. Uh, it, or it, impressionistic? It, maybe uh, abstract, more okay. abstract. Okay. Let's, and from these abstract sounds, suddenly come, comes a, a kind of a melody. So, you know, it, it differs from yeah. one yeah. work to the other. Did you uh, start, but you started the piano? When you I go. use piano or a synthesizer because I do use the computer as a typing machine. Ah. It shows the so process. Wait, so the computer is actually do the harmony for you? Yeah. Nothing. The comp if I say a type machine, I mean, uh, if you write a text, the, the computer doesn't write the text. For right. Okay, so if I say the computer, I use the computer as a type machine. So the music is my in my head and I type it okay. on the computer. That's okay. I, would, I wish I would... Uh, get this problem it's really sound fascinating but tell me something but i hope wait, it's okay wait, because i think it's important to say that this performance is going to to be resumed on in august in london right because okay. the first one the opening was in leipzig a year and a half ago but you're coming back in august in, Europe, in february 2020 and in july it was in, uh, performed in the Opera House of Palermo. And if you type in YouTube, Ella Milch Sheriff slash Ludwig van Beethoven, you will come to the YouTube of this amazing performance in the Palermo Opera House. Check it out. It was staged there and it's very beautiful. Right. So, this was in Palermo in July, the first concert uh, after the Corona period, oh, okay. uh, which everything was uh, closed in Italy. And this was the first uh, concert. So they were so uh, excited. That's great. And in August, it will be in London. Wonderful. Right. Listen, I have a question that bothers me and I hope it's okay. So mm -hmm. your parents were born in Germany? In Poland. No in Poland. I just want to tell you in parentheses. Uh, I know a young, um, she's not a composer, I think she's more in the visual arts. Um, and, and her name is Yael Bartana. And she's oh. talking about the renaissance of Poland, that the Jews will come back to Poland. Um, but right now there is almost a renaissance in Berlin of how many Israelis are in Berlin. And this is something, you see, I, I did a film about, you know, about Berlin, Berliner, it was my father. And I have a problem to go to certain countries because of antisemitism and Holocaust. And I, I don't know if for you it's important to voice your voice uh, in this country, especially like Germany, like Poland. Um, I ask myself, you know, this question a lot. You know, in, in uh, my father's diary, he writes that after his family was killed, he bought himself a pistol with the ammunition. And uh, he writes, uh, they, they won't catch me up easily. I put this phrase in the text 
of my first work can have it be void. And uh, uh, so the actor or the narrator is uh, uh, saying revenge, just revenge. I bought myself a pistol and so on and so forth. The first time this work uh, played in Germany was in Berlin. Mm. And I was sitting alone in an empty hall and on the stage in the rehearsal was a German orchestra, an Israeli conductor, an Israeli metal soprano, and a German actor. And he narrated the text and suddenly when he came to this uh, sentence, revenge, just revenge, he shouted, revenge, just, and I, uh, I sank into my seat, I was alone, and suddenly I understood, I am fulfilling the revenge that my father uh, did not succeed to, to make. This is the revenge that a German orchestra, a German actor, a German audience have to play it, to listen to it, to listen to this story again and again. But I must admit that with the time when this work was played and my opera as well to students and to to young people the age of 15, 16, 17, 18. And I had talks with them and wonderful talks. Suddenly I understood not the revenge is important, the dialogue right. that is, uh, is uh, um, created through my music yes. uh, which form something new, something better is much more important than the revenge. So yes, it is important for me to go to Germany, to Austria, to Lithuania, where it was to Ukraine, to every place, which uh, even to the, your United States, who didn't let just uh, less than 100 years ago to, to Jewish people, Go to yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, it but, is. Yeah. But you know, it's, I can't think. Can't you, can you fix your headspace a little bit? Yeah. What do you think? Can you fix your headspace a little bit? CP wants more headspace. No headspace. I want to see your, your wonderful forehead. That's, there, that's it, more or less. Okay. Thank you. Wow. That's good. Wow. You know, it's very interesting because I don't have any connection to the Holocaust, really. My family was in Israel, nobody was in, in the Holocaust. But I, I think that everybody has their relationship with the Holocaust in their way. And I have a big problem with certain areas in Europe. I can't go there, I feel terrible. Um, and I often think about those who do go because there's a huge Israeli community in uh, Germany. And I'm thinking about the young people that go they have nothing to do with the Holocaust. They have nothing to do with what took place. They look at it as a cool city, not expensive, uh, not far from home, basically. And they, they can carry whatever they want, which is fine, which is fine. And I think that uh, some of the revenge probably is going back to the Germans and, and live there and say, you know what? We lived here before, we can live here now, and no matter what, we're going to do it our way. There's so many ways uh, I still don't have, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable to, to be part of it, but I can understand why people go, and also people want to forget, and they want to be able to live their life without carrying the memories of other generations. I think they should. So it's mixed. It's all mixed and it's fine. It's, I think it's all mixed and it's fine. I don't think that you can push anybody to do that way or the other way just to let them express. But we, what can, they we should feel. open the door and then they can yeah. ask questions. I cannot right. do more. You cannot do more than bring your music and you open the door for them. It's huge. To think about this huge right. door. It's yeah. a huge door. So I, I can really, your answer is, was really 
really great. Although, you know, in some countries it's more difficult, like Poland and even Austria, who never felt accountable. Poland even now would like to erase, right, the Holocaust. Uh, so it's much more difficult to open the door. Yeah, it, uh, by the way, and the Red Loft, my first opera with Nava Semel was played in Warsaw, Poland. Just a second, just, I want to say a, a word about Nava. Nava Semel was a writer and a playwright. She passed away a few years ago right. and she wrote an opera about the Holocaust and Ella composed and it. Wrote, a, book, a book and based on that, you had an opera. An opera. <laughs> right, so you went to Poland and? So uh, uh, after it was uh, played many times in Israel, it uh, went for one performance to Warsaw and uh, the wife of the president, then Kaczynski, who was with his wife killed in this uh, airplane. plane incident, if you remember. So the Anyhow, whole government went down. Yeah, but uh, she was there in the performance. It was 2005 or six, something like that. And uh, she was there with the, the Israeli ambassador and the mayor of Warsaw. And there is a certain place in this opera, uh, Odette Kotler was the stage director. An Israeli uh, writer and director, uh, actor and director, yeah. So uh, the story tells uh, the story of a, a little girl uh, given by her parents to uh, uh, two uh, peasants, Polish peasants, uh, to give her a hiding place. So, um, just a minute. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, to give her a hiding place uh, for money. And uh, uh, she, uh, and the money stops coming because. Uh, uh, the, the the parents were killed, so the peasants uh, are very cruel to her, and of that Kotler uh, staged it so the the woman peasant she spits you say, Yoreka uh, spits spits on on the girl. At that moment the. Uh, the wife of the president, the Polish president, stood up and she wanted to leave the hall in the middle wow. of the opera. And uh, the, the mayor of Warsaw calmed her down and she stayed until the end. She didn't clap and she, she left without coming to the reception. It's they, it, they find it really very hard to accept the fact that there were very good Polish people who really yes. helped us uh, yes. to escape. My father was uh, hidden by two Polish families, otherwise I wouldn't have been sitting here now. So, um, but also there were many Poles and Ukrainians, especially, who cooperated with the Germans, yes. Yes. were even more cruel than the original. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just wonder so, where did you get your love for music and your sister for theater? theater. Was it at home? Well, I don't, I don't think so. My mother uh, sang very beautifully. Yes. So she used to sing the lullabies and these kind of things. But just a minute, let me close the door. Okay, we are, today we are so, uh, no, we are women. So we are always surrounded by, you know, yeah, yeah that's, yeah. My, my uh, boyfriend, I have a boyfriend. That's very nice. Came in and he's preparing us dinner now, which is uh, yeah, great. <laughs> Very nice. You are lucky. Um, uh, what? Uh, I was what talking about your home. Where did you get you the music and the uh, so, uh, My my sister was playing the piano, 
Um, my parents came from Poland to Germany, to Israel, and they brought uh, with them a piano from Germany. So my sister was uh, playing the piano. Uh, she, she tried to make her exercises and she was not talented. And I, as a three-year-old uh, girl, I played from hearing what she couldn't play from the notes. <laughs> very clear, very early age that uh, I'm in music. And she was uh, a kind of an actor in the school. So she, in the school, there were some performances. She always acted. And, you know, so it's, I think- I, th I think it's a gift. You're given with abilities that you were given um, and you're born into it. So if there is a, a cultural home, they can maybe help to it or uh, fuel it, but you, you basically bring your own gift to life. And if you're supported well, you can bring it out. So and you were supported? Is, uh, you were supported in your, you were supported by your family? Well, anyway. listen, my Polish parents, a musician is not a, was not a profession. I, I had to, my father was a physician. He was a gynecologist. So he wanted either Shosh or me to, to yes. be a to be medical doctor. doctor. Yeah. And we didn't, it didn't even occur to us. <laughs> and then a, a lawyer, like a good uh, Jewish family. And I actually went to study law uh, after the military service, I went to the law faculty in wow. Tel Aviv University for one year. But on the way, uh, I passed through the music academy. The academy of music was in the beginning and then the law school, right. So I left after one year, went to the music academy, and the, the rest is history. history. Do you look back, when, when you look back now, to your parents and the world you, they brought you in and how they cope, you know? What do you think? What's your, what, what feeling did evoke in you looking back at them? Listen, Tippi, um, if I want to be honest and you saw the film yes. and uh, a lot of the truth about my childhood, Yes. They, yes. Uh, I would say that uh, for many years I didn't feel I had a childhood yes. at all. Uh, I didn't feel I'm hugged, I'm supported. I, 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 I didn't feel I have the warmth needed for a, a, baby, a child, a girl to grow up. Uh, I, I felt very lonely child very lonely and uh, I, my my friends my girlfriends were afraid to come uh -huh. to my house because wow. they were afraid from my father his look wow. they described uh, his cold blue eyes looking at them uh, in a, a kind of a freezing gaze which uh, that made them frightened. Wow. So they didn't want to come to me. I went to their homes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, but with the time, after I read what my father wrote, still when he was alive, uh, because he wrote his memories when he, uh, in his last years, um, and so I, I started to understand. And uh, my sister, Shosh, she wrote so beautifully the um, how do you say the introduction, the introduction. introduction to the book. Uh, and at the end of the book, she said, We learned how to forgive you. Wow, well, right. So well. I understand. And I <laughs> Gave, but uh, I cannot say that I had a happy childhood, and I cannot say that as a child you accept and understand why you, you don't have all this. 
Yeah, but, but, but now you have compared. But thank God for the music and for yes. the way that you're able to uh to play it along your life and create so beautifully but also Just now you're having a lot i can feel really um kind of human compassion for your parents i mean yes it's, it's not a question of forgiveness almost it's a question of accept it a, a, a accept looking it. at them and see yeah. them as as humans who went through whatever they went through and they didn't necessarily have the skills to embrace life the way you and your sister did in spite of the way you grew up but say uh, you know you know i always wonder how all these wounded people were able to continue and to yeah. and and live a life their way but it's it's beyond my understanding i just don't understand how can you and to create what you create and and keep it going it's outstanding yeah it's really amazing i want to tell you i really I really like your music a lot. I didn't know you. I really knew about your history through Avi's uh, film. Although I knew your sister, but I, but you know, it almost wasn't, I mean, I knew about you writing this piece, but I didn't connect really, you know? And I think, I, I really like your music. I think it, um, it is a real storytelling in the music. The music without the libretto, without the words, it's very it has dramatic, a very powerful beautiful. story yeah. a narrative there that you can you know and it really uh, it, it's compelling i i really want to thank you for for oh, writing so you no know, so beautifully and i i envy you because you know when i was young maybe 13 14 i i i, I thought i can write music to songs you know and i wrote and then I decided I'm not good enough, which is not smart. You want to, to write, write, you know, don't just judge it. You cannot do it. And I'm very happy that you by yourself grew up to be such a musician. That's wonderful. In spite of being overcritical as we all are, and, uh, but yes, you're right. And yeah. don't forget, that I was married yes. to a, a musician who, were, who was a, a giant yes, musician. Yes, was a giant. For me, as a woman and as the wife of Noam Sharif, to make it as a composer yes, was- Yes, unbelievable. Even, Clara, even Clara Schumann couldn't do it. You should be, you started before you met Noam. So- She was a student. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. as a student, you already were a musician. I mean, that was part of you. Listen, Silly. This, this is a very big deal and it's beautiful. That was a wonderful, actually, meeting, right? Yeah. I'm very happy. And you took me back into your memory lane. And, you know, I join you, you know, in your journey. Although, you know, that's beautiful. So let's... Ella, thank you. Thank you very much. And mm -hmm. thank everybody that came to, to us. And... Uh, We'll see you next, next week, week with another inspirational guest. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was great. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.